what is energy? Uh, we're going to talk about thermodynamics and I hope you know the second law of thermodynamics um, but also I hope you know that the first law of thermodynamics uh, we're going to start talking about these today um, and in general the topics for today are energy we're going to talk about power as well as energy we're going to talk about units so how do we measure energy how do we know how much energy we have and how do we talk about power and also we're going to spend a little time looking at accuracy and precision so to get started then um we talked last time about the the energy problem Usually when we talk about the energy problem, the energy problem is that we don't have enough energy and we use too much energy. Uh, this is another energy problem. What is energy? Um, what, well, what units do we measure energy? For example, if we're talking about length, then we can measure length in meters. If we talk about mass or weight, we can use kilograms. What do we measure energy in? Um, just uh, if you want to just think about this, write down a few ideas, just hit pause, write down a few hours, a few ideas, and then you can come back in a few moments and see how many I came up with. See, see if you got more than me. So there are there are many ways to measure energy, and let's just start with um, the SI unit, the standard international measurement of energy, is the joule. Uh, the kilowatt hour is used. For example, you're using electricity right now. You're using electricity if you're watching this somehow. If you're plugged in, you'll be using kilowatt hours. That's how electricity is measured. If you're using um, food, so we eat energy, and usually when we're eating energy, that's measured in calories. Um, you may use oil for heating, and that's usually measured in liters. If you've got gas, it's probably measured in Japan in cubic meters. Um, you have a phone battery that stores energy. And that's probably measured in amp hours. Um, BTUs is another measurement of energy in usually in gas, also used in the US. Um, electron volts, if you're talking about how many how much energy there is in an atom in the electrons, uh, as you remember from Einstein, E equals M C squared. Um, it's also also in standard units, Newton meters is another measure of energy. Um, and in basic units, it's kilogram meter squared per second squared, which we'll come to a little bit later. So um, joule, the unit of joule is named after a person. And uh, here he is. This is um, James Prescott Joule, who I think was from Manchester in the north of England. Uh, he was around from 1818 to 1889, and his main business was beer. He had a, a beer brewery, so he used to make beer. Um, something like this would be what his, uh, his establishment looked like. And the important ingredients, these are ingredients... Um, not for beer, but the ingredients for, for this science were, first of all, beer. And you, if you've ever tried to make beer, you probably haven't. But if you have tried to make beer, you will know that it's important to keep the beer at a constant temperature in order to make good beer. And also around this time, there were some very, very accurate thermometers. So uh, Joule could measure the temperature very, very accurate to within something like 0 0.01 of a degree. 
And um, also he was interested in science. Uh, there seemed to be many people interested in science in England around this time and in, in other parts of Europe. And he came up with what's now known as the first law of thermodynamics. And this was um, what what he found was that if he started mixing, started putting energy into his beer, the temperature would go up. So he worked out that heat is work and they're the same thing. Um, and energy, heat is energy, work is energy, and it's conserved. So if you put energy into a system, for example, by stirring it, then the temperature will go up because the heat is increasing within the system. Um, so that was that's the first law. Um, and when we're talking about so when we're talking about energy, we saw there are many different units for energy. And energy can appear in many different forms, but it's all the same. It's all energy. Um, so a, another um, another look. So just looking at the units, looking at the definition of the units, um, a joule, one joule is the energy needed to move one newton. A newton is force, one meter. So if you're pushing against a force, you're using energy. And we can look at the units, we can just look at the dimensions. This is sometimes very helpful to look at what units we have. And um, everything comes down to mass and distance and time. Pretty much everything we can express in terms of that. So the, a joule is newtons per meter. Um, newton is... A newton is accelerated mass. So we can look at that as kilograms meters per second squared. And so joules come out as being kilograms meters squared per second squared. Um, and we're going to be looking at these, uh, these units again later, um, as we will find out. So before joule, before joule worked out that energy was heat and heat was energy, there was an idea called caloric, and people thought that heat was a substance. So if something was hot, it had more of this caloric in it, and as it cooled down, it lost, it lost the caloric. Um, and we still use the word, when you look at food, um, food has calories, and the word calorie comes from this old word caloric for something which doesn't actually exist in science. Um, because heat is not stuff. Heat is not a thing. And also heat is not temperature. And um, this, is, this is a little bit confusing. If you do find this confusing, don't worry. It is confusing. So uh, I have a question for you then. Um, which is hotter? One litre of hot air or one liter of hot water. I just have them, um, I just have these, so I'm just gonna show you. I'm put my gloves on, so I burn my fingers. So here I've got, here we have them, um, here we've got one, one liter of hot water, one liter of hot air. Which do you think is hotter? Um, now, hotter, hotter, of course, means um, hotter means higher temperature. And I'm afraid this is a trick question. Uh, they're both hot. And if it's hot water or hot air, it's probably the same temperature. What the question we should be asking, um, and the question you probably thought I was asking, is this one not which one is hotter but which one has more heat and um what do you think which one has more heat a liter of hot air or a liter of hot water um just to put this into practical terms um if you want to make your bed warm if you have a cold bed what will you put in it what would you use to make it warm would you use some um, 
hot water or hot air? Which one? Hot water, hot air. What do you think? Go and have a think and come back and then we'll see. We'll see. Hot water has more heat than hot air. You probably know this. You probably instinctively know this. My next question is um, how many times more? So how many times more heat is there in a litre of hot water than in a litre of hot air? Um, I talked before about units and numbers and knowing how much energy we have. So how much energy do we have? How much heat do we have in each one? And to um, to work this out, we need to think about heat capacity. And this is some um, heat capacity is the energy per unit per change in temperature. So um, the energy here are a couple of equations for you. Um, energy is the specific heat capacity times the mass times the temperature difference. Or it may be in terms of volume, in which case it's the heat capacity, the volumetric heat capacity times the volume times the temperature difference. Um, here are a couple of numbers to help you work this out. Um, the specific heat capacity of water is 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Um, and the volumetric heat capacity of air is 1.2 kilojoules per cubic metre per Kelvin. Um, just note here, there's a K um, and the capital K, notice that kilojoule, the kilo is a small K and the Kelvin is a capital K and the joule is a capital J, the J for joule is capital J and the M is a small m. Now, if these units come from a person's name, we use a capital letter. So big K is talking about Kelvin, and small k is talking about kilo. Uh, when we're writing the word Kelvin, uh, we don't need a capital K, we need a small k, because we're talking about the unit. Um, by the way, this is... Kelvin. This is Lord Kelvin, also known as William Thomson. Um, he is where we get the name Kelvin, which is a unit of temperature. Um, and he was around a little bit later than Joule. They, they, I think they knew each other. Um, so how many times more heat do we have? Uh, and to work this out, we need to know how much energy is there in one litre of hot water. How much energy is there in one litre of hot air? And um, any time you want to go away and calculate this yourself, uh, please press pause. I, I'm just going to give you a bit more information. Uh, when we say um, hot, we're talking about, importantly, we're talking about the temperature difference. So to get the energy out of hot water, it has to cool down. So let's say that the hot water is 80 degrees centigrade and let's say room temperature is 20 degrees centigrade and this means the temperature difference is 60 Kelvin. Um, and just to keep track of the units, um, let's use centigrade if we're talking about absolute temperature. So how hot is it today? And let's use Kelvin for talking about temperature difference. Um, so 60 Kelvin. Um, and let's look at the answers. Uh, so for the water, um, water has a density of one kilogram per litre. So one litre is about one kilogram. Um, that was the equation for energy. If we put the numbers in, we get 4.2 is a specific heat capacity. It's one kilogram, so just times one, and then times 60. Um, let's just check the dimensions. Um, so we've got kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin times kilogram times Kelvin. So the kilograms and the Kelvins cancel out, and we're left with 252 
kilojoules. Um, it's a very good idea to check the dimensions and this becomes especially useful when we've got killer, killer, killer is a thousand. So if we forget a kilo somewhere, we may have the answer wrong by a thousand times, which we don't want to do. So this is 252 kilojoules. Um, the air, on the other hand, is um, one litre of air. And one litre is 0 0.001 metres cubed. So if, if we remember the 1.2 was not in litres, it was in metres cubed. So we need to put the volume in as 0 0.001. We've got 1.2 as the heat capacity and the temperature difference is the same. Temperature difference is 60. Again, if we check the dimensions, we've got kilojoules per metre cubed Kelvin times metres cubed times Kelvin. The meters cubed and the kelvins cancel out and we're left with 0 0.7, 0 0.072 kilojoules or 72 joules. So the answer for how many times um, water has over 3,000 times more heat than the hot air. So if you do want to stay warm, then you want to use you want to use this one. You want to use a hot water bottle. Nobody's heard of a hot air bottle because they, they just don't have a lot of heat in it. They may be hot in temperature, but they won't make your bed warm. Um, so just to, to go on um, to a very important, a very important consideration is accuracy and precision. Now, um, we need to make a distinction between these two things. People often think it's the same um, and they look at something with lots of numbers and they trust it and look at something that doesn't have many numbers and they don't trust it. Um, however, uh, they're not the same thing. And this is an example, this is an example from a target. So you can see um, on the bottom left is not very accurate and not very precise. Um, the bottom right is more accurate, so the, the bullets are hitting the target, the bullets are going where we want them to go, um, but they're not all in the same place. Um, the top ones are much more precision, so they're, they're much closer together. Um, the low accuracy, high precision, um, they're all very close to each other, but they're all in the wrong place. And um, high accuracy and high precision, they're all close together and they're all in the right place. This is an, an image of um, this is an image of accuracy and precision. Um, next, I have an, another question. Um, here are two um, numbers for pi. Um, which one of these is more accurate? Which one is more precise? So pi is 3.1425976433172698 and pi is a bit over 3. The top one has lots of precision and the bottom one is 100% accurate. Um, in fact, pi is not 3.1425967633172698, but pi is a bit over 3. The bottom one is completely accurate, uh, but not very precise. Um, pi is, in fact, around 3.14159. Usually, um, one significant figure is enough. So for a lot of calculations, we just need to know pi is around 3. It's a little bit more than 3. And that's usually enough for many calculations. Um, and precision and accuracy are not the same thing. Just because there are lots of numbers after something does not mean it's right. Um, and just because there are not very many numbers doesn't mean it's wrong. So just to look a bit more deeply at, at the the calculation we just did about the hot water 
and the hot air. Um, if we look at the specific heat capacity of water, it's not exactly 4.2. It changes as it gets hotter. Um, it's around 4.2, but it drops down a little bit below 4.18. And as you start to get over 85 degrees, the capacity goes over 4.2. So there's a bit of a range. Um, the density of water changes. So as water gets hotter, it gets less dense. So if we have one litre of water, there may be more mass, there may be more kilograms of water as it gets hotter, or as it gets colder, rather. Um, also, air changes in density. Um, so, an air changes in density quite a lot as it gets hotter. So the actual numbers, if we want to know what the real numbers are, uh, we said uh, that water was one kilogram. It's somewhere between 0.972 and 0.997 kilograms. Um, and the heat capacity of water is somewhere in this range. The density of air could be between 1 or 1.2 kilograms per cubic metres. And this makes for quite a big range in the heat capacity. And also, there's a difference whether the volume is constant or the pressure is constant with the hot air. Um, so these numbers that we're putting in, they're not precise numbers. We don't know how accurate these numbers are. They're not exactly the numbers we put in. Um, so in fact, if we put the calculations in, it could be 5,754 times or 4,125 times or 3,384.4917 times. Um, we do know it's over 3,000 times. And to the question, how much more heat is there in water than in air? Um, for most purposes, the answer is a lot. If you're trying to decide, do I want to take a hot water bottle or a hot water bottle to make my bed warm? Um, we don't really need to know any of these numbers. We just need to know that the hot water has a lot more heat. And um, generally then, when we're making calculations, um, it's very important to know how accurate your numbers are. So if you put in a number that's not accurate, the answer is not going to be accurate either. And also to think about how accurate your numbers need to be. Often if we're making a choice between two things, then we need to know is this more or is this more? We don't need to know exactly how much more it is, often. Um, and when we're writing numbers, um, don't use more precision than accuracy. And just to look at, the, um, look at the numbers that we get, looking at the significant figures, when we see the number four, um, what four often means is somewhere between 3.5 and 4.5. So the number four tells us often that it's plus or minus 10%. So we don't know how if there's more accuracy. 4.2 is between 4.15 and 4.25. So this is an accuracy of 1%. Um, if we see 4.18, then this is an accuracy of 0.1%. Um, so, so think about the significant figures and think about the accuracy and think about the precision. Next, let's talk about energy change and power. And um, we talked before, we looked at different ways of measuring energy, and there are different forms of energy. So energy can take mechanical form, it can take kinetic energy, this is energy of something moving, or potential energy, um, something, if we raise something to a height, it has more energy. If we let it go, we can release the energy. Uh, there's thermal energy, there's chemical energy, there's nuclear energy, uh, there's electrical energy, electromagnetic energy. This is um, also radiation is one example. And um, magnetic energy. So here we have all different kinds of energy. 
and I need to just introduce another another person who has been dead a few hundred years. Um, this is James Watt, who was um, older than Jewel and Kelvin. Um, and you have probably heard of Watt and probably know of his invention, which was the steam engine. Um, he invented, he didn't actually invent the steam engine, but he made the steam engine possible to use. Um, and he was using this, the first use was for pumping water out of coal mines. So what would happen is they would get the coal out of the coal mine, uh, they burn the coal, the coal makes steam, the steam pushes down a piston, uh, the piston pumps some water, the water comes out of the coal mine, and then they can dig out more coal. And this kind of started the Industrial Revolution. When we see, um, when we look at the climate change and carbon dioxide emissions, they usually start around 1800, which is before what? Um, so, um, the power is then defined, if we look in the dictionary, um, power is the time rate at which work is done or energy is emitted or transferred. So we're talking about the change or the movement of energy. Um, this is from Merriam-Webster Dictionary. This is the sixth definition of power. Uh, so the way we use the word power is often not very scientific. Um, so we have to be careful. So if we're confused about energy and power, um, then it's because of our language, and our language doesn't do science very well often. Um, so, um, energy, power. Um, power is the movement or change of energy in simple terms. Um, and a watt, watt is another unit, and a watt is one joule per second. So if you're using one joule of energy per second, you're going at one watt. Um, or one newton, one newton, one meter per second. If you're pushing a newton up a hill by one meter per second, then you're using one watt. So I'd just like to think now about, here are a few things um, in everyday life a shower, a car, an oil tanker, a piece of wood, a battery, a solar panel, an air conditioner, fat, muscle, sunshine, a reservoir, and wind. Um, please have a think about this now. Do you think these are energy? If we're talking about showers or cars, are we talking about energy or are we talking about power when we usually talk about these things? Um, have a think and come back and then we'll look at more. So energy or power. I, I, with a shower we're probably thinking about power. Uh, a car we're also probably thinking about power. An oil tanker is full of oil. Oil is full of energy so we'll probably be talking about, about energy. Um, a piece of wood we can burn. If we burn it it will give off energy. Uh, similarly, a battery is a store of energy. Um, a solar panel is usually rated in watts, so that's talking about power. Similarly, an air conditioner is using power. Um, fat in our body is the way our body stores energy. Um, muscles have a little bit of energy in them, but usually our muscles are power. So our muscles use the energy in our body and turn it into, into work. Um, sunshine is also power, power from the sun, um, and a reservoir is a store of water at a height. When we let this water down, um, it releases energy, so it's, a, it's energy, and wind is power. Uh, next question then, which one do you think uses the most power? Um, again, these are things in your everyday life. Uh, try and put these in order. So which of these uses the most power? Is it a computer, an air conditioner, a shower, a kettle, you climbing up the stairs? And which one uses the least power? Uh, please uh, go away and have a think about this. 
Um, and so um, power then, so power and units. Um, now power is in watts or kilowatts. A kilowatt is a thousand watts. Um, and confusingly, a kilowatt hour is one kilowatt for one hour. And this is energy. Um, and so we're just going to go back to talking about energy now. And specifically, we're going to talk about energy in kilowatt hours. Um, this is my favorite unit for talking about energy. Um, one kilowatt hours is 3.6 million joules. A joule is a, is a pretty small amount of energy, really. Um, and a kilowatt hour is 860 kilocalories. Um, it's a lot of electron volts. Electron volts are, are not very useful in the real world. You need so many of them. Um, so another question then, how much energy? Here are another five things that you may have not too far away from you. Um, a litre of paraffin, a mobile phone battery, a rice ball, a litre of hot water, or a gram of uranium. So how much energy do you think each one of these has? Uh, try and put them in order. Have a think. Um, hit pause and I'll show you the answers in a moment. Um, so a kilowatt hour then is, um, this is all, this is different ways of looking at a kilowatt hour. So all of these things have roughly the same amount of energy. Um, if you switch on a light, a 100 watt light bulb, a strong light bulb for 10 hours, you've just used one kilowatt hour. Um, 0.1 liters of paraffin is about one kilowatt hour. Um, 0.1 cubic meters of gas is around one kilowatt hour. And um, five rice balls is about one kilowatt hour. Uh, if you heat up 20 litres of hot water, um, that the energy in the heat is around 20 litres. Um, 200 mobile phone batteries will have about one kilowatt hour of energy in them. Um, you going up 500 flights of stairs uh, uses about one kilowatt hour. And... Um, 0 0.04 milligrams of uranium has one kilowatt hour. So you don't need very much uranium at all to get a kilowatt hour. Um, so back to the first law of thermodynamics then. Um, remember heat is work, work is energy, and energy is conserved. So often we will convert one kind of energy to another. So for example, we may use gas to heat up our hot water, or we may use um, electricity that's come from a nuclear power station, which is converting, which is charging our battery and charging up our mobile phone battery. Um, or we may eat some onigiri and climb up some stairs. Uh, perhaps not 500 flights of stairs, but that's how many stairs you'd have to climb if you want to burn off three one nigiris. Uh, so um, energy and so energy is conserved. We we can't make energy; we can just turn it from one kind into another. Um, so heat moves. Then the other thing that can happen, as well as turning energy from one form into another, is once we have heat, um, it can move and it can move through air, it can move through water, um, and there are three ways that it moves. One of them is called conduction, one is called convection, and the other one is called radiation, um, or in Japanese, those are some Japanese terms to help you. Um, so, have a think about this way, these ways that we may see heat moving around us, uh, you, you can't see heat, but heat is moving around you all the time. Um, how is it, if if heat is moving across a room, is that conduction or convection or radiation? How about heat going through a wall? 
How about from a spaceship? How about in a kettle? Um, what about in your clothes? And what about a flat roof on a cloudless night? And how does heat transfer from a fire? Um, please uh, think about all of these things. Um, it's conduction, convection or radiation. Next question is, is which way does heat move? And heat only moves one way. Heat will only move from hot to cold. And this is um, this is uh, Nicola Sardicano, um, who was again around the same time, around the um, 18th and 19th century. Um, and he came up with the the second law of thermodynamics, um, which is that heat goes from hot to cold. Um, entropy. Entropy increases. And we'll talk more about the second law next time. Um, just to think back to our question about a low energy building. So a low energy building is a building that uses little energy. Uh, we've looked at the different kinds of energy. If we're not using much of it, it's low energy. That's all for today. I hope you have lots of energy.